They're not a sponsor, so I'm just going to ask, when will the people of Buffalo realize that Mighty Taco is just white American cheese on El Paso refried canned beans? Like, when will the people just know it's just white American cheese? That's the secret. People come, like, we talk, like, just an example, Sean from Mr. Rogers Homes. When you come to Buffalo, what are the things you're doing? You're going to get wings. Yep. For some reason, Mighty Taco is on the list when you can literally make it at your own house. Just put white American cheese on it. It is might you've figured out the secret. That's the secret sauce. This isn't the Bush's beans secret recipe. This is when you're from when you come back from Arizona, from the house you bought from Sean, from Mr. Rogers Homes.com. When you come back to visit, why is Mighty Taco one of the things that people say, Oh, I just had to get Mighty. I just I had to get it. Because it's something from your childhood that you've done before. Or you constipated. One of the two. I don't know. You know those hair clips? You yes. know the, the hair clips? Did you ever put them over your lips when you were a kid? Those big... Yes. Big, okay. Do you do that at any time to relive your childhood? No! No. No, you don't. But... We all, we all grow as people. We all grow as adults. This coming we need from to the make guy, better decisions. This is coming from the guy where at least two, two nights a week... On our joint credit card, I have to see a purchase for thirty-five dollars to Little Caesars. It's the only place to get stuffed crust, and I will defend that till the day I die. It's the only place to get stuffed crust around Little here. Little Caesars, anymore. if you're watching, yeah, we can put you next to Mr. Rogers. <laughs> pizza, pizza. I was gonna make a joke about McDonald's being like, "Dude, I, it's not real meat." Well, it's playing the part. <laughs> if you walk into McDonald's, you're already saying. My 70s. <laughs> Those years would have been nice. <laughs> we, in the comments section, we, we did the 2020 draft, the 2019 draft. And we talked, uh, you know, it's a, we got some comments asking if we do 2018. We can didn't. I, can I tell you, though, Paul? Yeah. Sorry to cut you off. No, no, no. But can I tell you? That is, <clears throat> it's comments like those that really, like, get me motivated. You know what okay. I mean? Like, not to say that co other comments don't. Like, you see the comments. I do see the comments. Okay, buddy. Because I don't uh, reply to all of them. But here's my point. We did a 2020, 2019. Mm -hmm. we, we got a comment. You guys are going to do a 28. Like, there, people are excited to see if we can break that down and have some yeah. fun with that. Because it was a really, truly a fun exercise. It was. Those episodes are hilarious. But the fact that you guys want to see more of that is kind of like, it's reward. You know what I mean? It's like a little pain. Very much so. All right, so I think it kind of goes without saying. The Josh Allen pick at seven. Players drafted right beforehand. Do we even need to talk about this? Would yes. you rather have Denzel Ward? No. Would you rather have Bradley Chubb? No. Okay. Quentin Nelson. That's a tough one. I know. He plays angry, right? No, please, don't. He we plays have, angry. We have to put this in context. Yeah. Josh Allen and Quentin Nelson. I mean, for different reasons, you love both of them. Sure. Yeah, for <laughs> incredibly different reasons. <laughs> Could you imagine? Just just paint this picture for you. You got you got Dawkins over there. And then you got Nelson and Feliciano. I'd run over there all day. What are we going? Off tackle left. Okay. Josh Allen wouldn't have to walk in Buffalo. They would just carry him everywhere. <laughs> All right. Um, so who's the three after? Roquan Smith. Nope. Mike McGlinchey. Nope. Nope. Josh Rosen. No. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, dodge that bullet. Sure. I will admit, I was pissed at the draft. They didn't draft Rosen. I'm just going to say it. I did not believe in a, in, a, in a college quarterback who failed to complete 56% of his passes. I just, I'm going to admit that I failed to believe it. There was a lot of mechanical stuff that I was convinced you couldn't teach at this level. And Josh Allen has proven to be an atypical person. If you guys want to go through the vault, 
I was high on Rosen as well because Josh Allen's stats nearly mirrored another guy that played in the Northwest, Ryan Leaf. We all know how that turned out. You still wore his jersey number in semi-pro football, so I don't yeah. know what you were thinking. <laughs> I'm leaving that in. I'm letting that in. Montana, Len Dawson, anybody else but freaking Ryan Leaf. I forgot to ask Bruce about um, his feelings on Anthony Munoz, since he said left tackles and right tackles are now just about equal. Look, like, how do you feel about Anthony Munoz? Greatest tackle of all time? Awful. Uh, yeah, so we're pretty comfortable with the Josh Allen, right? We could Obviously, probably fly right Yeah, yeah, okay. because, it, 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 but it was, you weren't getting the first two that were going. No. no. So... I think the Tremaine Edmonds one is a bit more of an interesting exercise. Oh, God, it is. Because Tremaine's come up on his option. You just resigned Milano, so it is of good likelihood. That stupid you're pick Pro up Bowl. That stupid Pro Bowl cost us like $4 million. Yes, please explain to the people. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the fifth-year option used to be based off of where you were drafted, right? And because Tremaine was drafted at 16, what? I swear to God. As these episodes progress and I keep watching more, yeah. and you do more shorts and more solos, like, yeah. am I just your driver at this point? Not sitting in the back. Because I'm always telling you to explain everything. <laughs> I'm not sitting in the back. Paul, could you tell them yeah. um, what this is? Well, why am I even here? <laughs> I, I'm going to need you to upgrade the uh, the studio here <laughs> so I can get a window yeah, in the van. <laughs> The fifth year option used to be based off of where you were drafted. Top 10 got paid at a different percentage as 11 to 32. There was a big disparity in some positions. They've changed that in the CBA to playing time requirements, which I'm not going to get into. I'll give you the most likely one that players are going to hit is if you played 75, 75% of your team's snaps two out of the three years. Yes. Okay. So that's, that's one, right? So the Bills ever drafted defensive end. He's, never make it a place with the snap count requirement. Um, so that was one. Um, and two is if you made a Pro Bowl, there's you get if you make a Pro Bowl, you get paid the transition tag. Yes. If you make two Pro Bowls, your franchise it's you get paid the franchise tag. Those are huge numbers. Enormous. Huge numbers. That's why everyone was wondering why Allen was and Jackson million. were more than uh, Baker and, um, and Darnold. Darnold. No Pro Bowls. Yeah. And what happened to Rosen? Fifth-year option. You got to be on a team. He's on his fifth team. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> but Edmonds now, because he made the Pro Bowl, went from being like an eight million dollar player to being like a twelve million dollar, almost thirteen million dollar player. So it's it's a it, is, it was a big swing. It was a big yeah. deal. Um, but I, I love that little caveat though. I want to explain. So three players drafted before Edmonds, which was 13, 14, 15. Who was uh, that? Deron Payne, Marcus Davenport, Colton Miller, the tackle from the the Raiders. Oh, okay. Does Deron Payne, Marcus Davenport, or Colton Miller do they get do they get your uh, do they get you going? No, no. I'm I'm saying right. I'm, I'm fine. I yeah. mean, Payne, Payne, maybe. I like Payne. I like him, but we knew what happened the next year. I'm always a little out. nervous about Alabama defensive tackles. I'm just not good. I'm just going. I'm worried about Clemson there. tackles. I'm worried about people liking Clemson running backs. Haven't we seen that show before? Just I mean, it's just me, guys. I hate Clemson no players. Point. I'm sorry. I, I know, know. I know. You, you scout the player, not the helmet. I know. I know. I know. I still don't like him. If Clemson played Ohio State, Paul would throw a grenade in the middle of the field. Yeah, yeah, I I would. Ah, uh, yeah. You gotta keep me away from that stadium. <laughs> Kidding. I'm just gonna solve Show. everybody's problems four months from now. <laughs> we don't have to talk about this. All right, three players after. Derwin James. Safety? Jair. Safety, yep. yep. Uh, Jair Alexander. I like Derwin James. Ooh, I like Alexander too. Green Bay? Uh, Green Bay. Leighton Van Der Esch. Now that's a discussion. I know, right? So Edmonds is walking into his option year. So you really, now that you have Milano, are you going to, does the Milano signing mean you're, you're not going to pick up Edmonds' option and this is his contract year? Because this would be Edmonds' contract year yes. now, right? So they have to decide what they're going to do by May. So that gives you the whole free agency period. And you know what else it gives you? What does it give you? The draft. Yes. Right? Then you have to make a decision on this fifth-year option. And it becomes guaranteed once you pick it up. It's guaranteed. Yeah, it's $12 million, as we right. talked about. Almost 13 actually. Almost 13 But, and a little bit of context here, when he was drafted, and then Vander Esch was taking three picks later, we mm -hmm. said, well, 
hey, Bills hopped in for an outside linebacker before uh, before the Cowboys could get one. Mm-hmm. Yep, whoops. that's exactly what happened. Whoops. I wouldn't say outside. whoops. I mean, I think no, you're but asking we... those two players to do two different things. If you put Edmonds in Van Der Esch's position, is he more successful or less successful? Uh, Edmonds as an outside linebacker? I mean, are we going to get a shovel and talk about this again? No, no. What I'm saying is that for Dallas, for the purposes of, like, look, the picks are switched. I think Edmonds, have, Edmonds is just as productive as Van Der Esch, if not maybe a little more. I think he would have been more productive. Than Think, if not a little bit more productive. The, more productive than Van Der Esch, yes. Yeah. Yeah, but Van Der Esch, you're moving Milano to the middle then if you draft Van Der Esch. Right. I, that's what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. and then you're probably not even resigning him because he's a middle at that point. Well, you also had Reggie Raglan on this team at that time. Don't, don't ever talk to me. You get, worried about, you get worried about <laughs> There is a stark difference between Tremaine Edmonds and Leighton Van Der Esch as far as uh, statistics. Even games played. Like, Van Der Esch has been hurt? Yeah, he's been hurt a little bit. Yeah, so, that's fine. I mean, you're in Dallas. I mean, that's... Yeah, so, I mean, I think it's an interesting discussion, but I, I still think for what you asked at the time, you drafted Edmonds and moved him to the middle. When you you know, middle, I, historically speaking, your middle linebacker is not the fastest in the world, right? Historically, and then you took a, a thoroughbred linebacker. Yeah, not in the new NFL though. Like, right, this is the new NFL. Right. Well, and some of the knocks on Edmonds coming out was he took really crappy angles. He was really good when he was blitzing, but he took some pretty crappy angles crashing on the corner on, you know, on edge rushes. Yeah, but and, if, you know, if, if we, if we progress that into now where he is now, what, what the construct in my view of the defense is, is that when you put Edmonds alone in the middle, you're hoping that four can eat up five yeah. and he can hunt. That's so what you're you thinking want. this year is different because it's going to be different. It's going to be di- no, not just, I'm not putting it all on one player. What I'm saying is star definitely helps. And 2020 prove that. I mean, it's a little hopey changey for me. You know, well, well, I think I think you came in and asked a 19-year-old linebacker to be quarterback. That's a defense. big difference, though. That's a that's a thing. He's 19 years old. I think know about that. That's huge. Well, that's another reason why maybe an extension for him makes more sense. It does. He's playing now at the age that some guys are entering the draft. Yes, and he's got three years' experience quarterback in that defense. Right. So, um, but it's it. it I just like it for the discussion. It's an interesting exercise to talk about Van Der Esch versus Edmonds. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm still – Van Der Esch versus Edmonds, I, I don't think you could have asked Van Der Esch to do what you did with Edmonds. No, no. That's the difference. You could tell Edmonds to do what Van Der Esch does in Dallas, mm-hmm. but Van Der Esch couldn't do what Edmonds could do in Buffalo. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't think. I very much agree with that. But you wouldn't be asking – that's the thing. That's the, that's the little curveball. You wouldn't be asking Van Der Esch to be a middle. No. You'd be, you'd be asking a fifth round, second year player to do it. Right. Yeah, to, to outplay. Again, Raglan was still on the team at that time. Raglan. You got a better 40 than Raglan. That is actually quite possible. Was Raglan on the team at the time? You got a ring. No, that's all I know. Or was Raglan the season before? Because Raglan was at. Okay, Raglan was there when we had press credentials before they realized that that was a bad idea. So when we had press credentials, uh, Raglan was there. So the next player up, because mind you, the Bills had to move quite a bit, right? So the next player up is Harrison Phillips. Well, it's tough. You can't get the three players after because they were compensatory. So the Bills wouldn't have any shot at those anyway. Yeah, but you could still He was the last at- pick in the round. Yeah, but you could still look at who, who it they was, were. Yeah. right, and then make the determination of okay. you know did they did they snatch the right player? Three picks above were one second, please. Oh, I'm sorry. This is where elevator music plays. Okay, uh, so the three the three picks above were Rodney. Or excuse me, I said Rodney. Excuse me, Ronnie Harrison, safety for Jacksonville. Alex Kappa. Tackle for Tampa, Tavarius Moore, safety for the Niners. I'm I'm fine. I'm fine with those. I'm fine with that. Um, picks afterwards: Mason Cole, center for Arizona; 
Jordan Atkins, tight end for Houston. Ooh, I like him. Isaac Yaidam. Doesn't matter. Doesn't I don't matter. even know if he's even on the Broncos at this point. I don't care. Yeah. Atkins. I love Atkins. I saw some of the things he did last year when I was watching games, mm-hmm. the Houston games. And he's an athletic big guy. Sure. It's it's impressive. No, I and I I like Atkins too. I think he's a little bit more of a throwback tight end, right? He's not that new He'll mold. He'll seal of the tight edge end. for you. He's not the new mold of tight end where they basically are just wide rec- you know, big wide receivers. Shannon uh, Shannon Sharps. Right. Right. Um but Harrison I think I think we have to have the potential talk, right? Because Harrison is rookie season. I think we were not impressed, but I think we were all a little surprised that he didn't immediately mature into the role. People were comparing him as the heir apparent to Kyle Williams. That's right. why his people saw him as a failure because he wasn't. Yeah. Right. So you can't just say that, that he's this guy. He may be cut from the same cloth and you know, this that people want to make those comparisons. That's fine. But he wasn't that type of player. So yeah. I think that's where the it was unfair to him. Mm-hmm. Well you're yeah. you're gonna compare me to this guy that could walk into any anchor bar right now and get a free plate of wings. Like <laughs> He could have. Kyle Williams could have. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, without a doubt. Kyle Williams Kyle Williams could now. I mean, he's going to eat significantly less wings. Yeah, the battery battery's about to go. So here's, a, okay. here's the one thing I wanted to say about that. About all the things that breakdowns we did in general. 2018, even go back to 2017. Mm-hmm. And we talked about this. 2017 draft. Trey White, fifth, fifth defensive back, right? Fifth, fourth. Fourth Fourth corner. Sorry, fourth. He was a fourth corner off the board. 2018, Josh Allen was one of five quarterbacks. Yep. Tremaine Edmonds was one of uh, four linebackers. Multiple linebackers. Four or five linebackers. 2019, Ed Oliver, one of five D tackles. There were a lot of D tackles in that draft, too. 2020, they trade for. Stephon Diggs, and there were five wide receivers. That, mm-hmm. that was the fifth wide receiver, technically. Yeah, Jefferson was the fifth Jefferson receiver the off the board. So, what does that say about a volume position? Would you say is the deepest part of this draft? I think linebacker is the deepest part of this draft. And they just signed one? Well, and you have another one coming up on an option. So, does... Okay, so, now I, I don't want to leave on a cliffhanger, but I feel like we have to leave on a cliffhanger. Do you pick up Edmonds' option only after... You see what you can get in the draft at of linebacker. Course. That's a smart thing to do. You don't pick it up before the draft. I mean, why not? Why would you pick it up before? As a, as a show of good faith? I mean, the the linebacker you draft in the first round is not going to cost you enough to be cost prohibitive to Edmonds. So worst case scenario, scenario is you have a first round linebacker next to a former first round linebacker next to Matt Milano, who's on a contract extension. Is that a bad scenario? No. No. No, it no, doesn't. I still wouldn't do it. <laughs> Does this sound like a good idea? Yeah. Then would you do no, it? It's a good no, idea. No, of course I, would, I wouldn't do it. Because there's no guarantee. I think you tip your hand. Mm. You extend Edmonds. That maybe they may send out a landscape of they're not going to go linebacker in the draft. But wouldn't you want they that? They extended their voice. No. What do you mean no? Because he's already been doing sleight of hand for three years. <laughs> So you think people are are privy to the game? This guy's well, going, hey, look over here, look over here, <laughs> it's yeah, in the face. But it's what he's. It, it is. They've often backed up that free agent class yeah. and the draft. Like it's. It's. Oh, this it's is a classic just, being move. Remember when he signed Yeldon two days before the draft and drafted Singletary? Singletary? Right. Like people will think that that's a kind of a ploy. Right. Yeah. No, I agree. So we're with the Bills picks. Value the way that it was. Josh, you're not trading. Tremaine, you're not trading. No. And. Harrison Phillips versus Jordan Atkins. I mean, you yeah, already you, had Charles Clay kind of at the end of his Bills run. Yeah, like, I don't you, think you're. I don't no, think you weren't taking that. Atkins because there was a reason he was a compensatory pick, and I understand that. But I mean, you needed that interior lineup because you knew the clock was ticking on Kyle. Yeah. So you needed a young body in there. Once again, me. Need. Mm-hmm. You're talking about Star, or not Star? Um, Oliver. Mm-hmm. Need. Mm-hmm. You had to. You had to get him. 
All right, I'm going to put you on the spot. Bills, when they draft, are they going offense or defense? Just offense or defense? Offense. Do you know anything about this team? <laughs> 